this morning. Welcome to all of you. Good morning, Miss Allen. Good morning, Miss Allen. At least somebody's ready to learn. There's always one group. There is always one teacher's pet, isn't there? Yeah. yeah. I'm featuring around with a video. I'm very sorry. <laughs> wow, here we are. Mm -hmm. This is cute, isn't it? Who's been ministered to this morning? Yes. You felt the Lord ministering to you? Yes. Have you? In the in the praise and the worship and the prayers. Father, I want to thank you that you are with us. And that you send your angels as ministering servants to those who inherit salvation. Father, I thank you that you know each of our needs, you know each of our desires, and that you're, you've always been a servant. Your heart has always been in serving. Father, I'm asking this morning that you would instill that same heart in us to be servants, to be ministers. To glorify you. Father, I pray a blessing on Pastor Donnie and Katrina as they're over in Tain and the church there yes. on their anniversary. Mm -hmm. Father, we love them and we just pray that you would bless them so much. Mm -hmm. Father, I thank you for the 14 years they've had as a church and I pray, Lord, that they would just go from glory to glory to glory to glory and ever increasing glory. Mm -hmm. Father, I thank you for the the embassy of the kingdom that attain that the church attain is mm -hmm. and father i pray lord that you would bring people into that safe refuge into that place where they find you that they find their god who is a strong tower who they can run into and be saved mm -hmm. father i thank you for this message this morning and pray lord that you would speak through me mm -hmm. that you would minister through me and that we would all be blessed yes. in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So my title, I have a title, yay. Oh, yeah. My title today is Ministry is Service. Did you know that? Ministry, ministry yes. is Service. We've, uh, we've been hearing over a number of weeks and months, it's our time. Mm -hmm. Haven't we? And it's a it's a time for ministry. But my questions have been, oh, what is ministry, and what does that look like? And you know, you go, you look in the Word, and you ask the Lord, and but ministry is service. It's just serving. It's time for us to serve. That's that is what this is in a nutshell, isn't it? <laughs> what. It's time, well, it's time for what? It's time for ministry. And ministry is service. Let's have a look at First Peter chapter 4. And in verses 10 to 11, it says, As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, it, if anyone ministers, let him do it with the ability that God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. I read these verses at the beginning of last week's um, service. Do you remember? <laughs> The Lord had put them in my heart then, like, um, just before there, these verses, it talks about um, have fervent love for one another, because love covers a multitude of sins. And our love for each other is expressed in serving one another. And I like these verses. It starts off, let, or as, each one. It says, each one. Who's each one? Um, uh, Rachel, are you are you a one? I am a one. Are you are you are you, are you, are you sure one? Yeah. 
won. You're the one. Yeah. Joey, you won. Yeah. Yeah. And each one. Anybody not an each one? Ah, uh, anybody, but we're anybody not a one? We're all one. We're all one. We're all one. Yes. <laughs> so it excludes nobody. It excludes nobody. As each one has received a gift. So each one has received a gift. Who's excluded? No one. No one. If you're born again, you're included in this each one. If you're a part of his kingdom, if you've known his grace, you are included in this each one. So each one, every single one of us in this room, has a gift that has been given to them. It says minister it to one another. Now the word for minister is the word that we get the word deacon from. And it's, it's diakoneu or something. I don't know Greek, so I'll probably say that wrong. <laughs> but it means to serve. It means to wait upon. Like, and to wait upon as in waiting on tables. I should have worn um, like a proper black and white kind of waiters outfit this morning. <laughs> a little bow tie. <laughs> but as waiting on tables to do someone to a service or a cure for somebody's needs. So each one, every single one of us, has a gift that we are, that is to meet somebody's need, that is to serve somebody else. It says steward it. And that word steward, it's a household steward, it's a manager, it's of an estate, it's a treasurer. It's got a little bit of responsibility attached. Because each one has a gift to minister to somebody else that they are responsible, that I am responsible, that you are responsible to minister in, to serve with. As good stewards of the manifold grace of God. That word manifold, and I love this, it means many coloured many coloured manifold is many coloured I like to think of it as multifaceted like a cut diamond this grace is this cut diamond and each face it's all part of the same grace it's all part of this gift of God his favour towards us but it's got different sides to it different expressions it catches the light in a different way whichever way you turn it so there's one grace with many different colours and each gift is a different hue or a shade or an expression of that grace. Each gift, that's all of us have a gift that is to minister, to serve somebody else and it's an expression of his grace, of his multifaceted, multicoloured, beautiful grace and nobody is from that. In Romans chapter 12, we turn over. Romans 12 and 6 to 13, it says, Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them if prophecy let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Or ministry, let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without hypocrisy, abhor what is evil, cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another, with brotherly love in honour, giving preference to one another, not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continually steadfastly in prayers, distributing to the needs of the saints given to hospitality. What a beautiful list of the way that 
We are to minister. We are to serve one another with this grace that we've been given, with these gifts, this expression of God's grace. When I was meditating on this yesterday, um, I had a, a picture of a, of a kitchen, like a well-run kitchen, you know, a really brand new, you know, there's a big long counter and there's lights above the counter and the food is getting dished up beautifully, prepared beautifully, put on plates, and then the chef shouts, service! And then the, the, the servers, they come and they take what's on the plate and they take it to the tables where it's destined to go. You know, that's like God with us. He knows the needs. He knows what the people at the tables are needing. He knows what needs to be plated up for them. That's going to meet a need. That's going to bless them. And he's plated it up beautifully. He's put it on the plates ready. And he's shouting, service! He's wanting us to be ready, to be available for that cry, service. So that we can take what he's plated up, that gift, and take it to the person who needs it. It's not about what I'm capable of doing. It's not about going, well, I can't prepare a spaghetti bolognese. <laughs> I don't know the first thing about spaghetti bolognese. Now he's done the preparation work. He knows what gift needs administered. We just need to be there and available for him to use us to serve somebody else. Whatever someone else needs is what we'll find ourselves gifted for. It's not about how well you can prophesy. It's not about how well you can organise chairs and tables. It's not a about how gifted you are in a certain avenue, in teaching. If somebody needs it, God's going to get it to them. And it's a demonstration of his grace, his multifaceted, his multicoloured grace that he is expressing through us. In verse 7 it says um, about those who, who minister that they use it in the ministering. And that ministering word means working as a servant and doing domestic duties. That's not all that glamorous. I, you know, cleaning toilets. We always go for cleaning toilets, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> always straight for the cleaning toilets, sweeping floors. I don't know. There must be more disgusting jobs out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Ali says there is, and I believe him, I won't ask him anymore. <laughs> no. But, you know, it's not glamorous. It's not, it's not beautiful. It's not lovely. It's not the most exciting job on the planet. But, you know, service, doing that job, applying yourself to something to help one another, it's, you're not cleaning it because you turned up to a mess and gone, oh, this is disgusting. And then you start, oh, I hate this. This is ridiculous. Oh, I shouldn't have to do it, type stuff. But you've got this attitude of, oh, someone else needs to put, use this bathroom after me. <laughs> someone else needs to come to uh, a, a bathroom that's got a toilet roll and a clean floor and a lid down and a, a tidy sink. Somebody else? Somebody else is? going to be blessed by us leaving a good testimony behind us. It's not about ourselves. You know, even those domestic duties are an expression of God's grace. It's another facet. It's another part of that cut diamond. It's another part of the colour of his love, of his grace. And, you know, we can't downplay practical service. We, we can't downplay it because it's there, it's listed in the list of spiritual gifts. It's listed so many times, serve one another, submit to one another, love one another. That might be in the prophetic, that might be in a gift of healing, that might be in <laughs> all these spectacular things, but let's not downplay the practical needs the practical things that we can do to serve one another. Let's have an attitude of how can I serve you? 
not just in the church, but wherever we go. When we turn up to our workplace on a Monday morning, how can I serve my colleague? How can I serve here? How can I serve them? What can I do to help you? And it could be that glass of cold water that you give to somebody that opens their heart up to receiving the Lord, to hearing the good news of the gospel. Don't downplay serving practically. Doing the ordinary extraordinarily with the strength and power and ability that God provides means so much to God. It does. He takes it as worship. He sees it. And he rejoices over that act of service. So I've got some examples of serving from the word. <clears throat> this same word, this diakoneu-esque word, deaconship type word, being a servant, being a, a, a waiter on people. In um, excuse me. <clears throat> so after Jesus is in the wilderness being tempted by the devil, angels came to minister to him. It's the same yeah. word. They came to serve him. They came to minister to him. They came to wait on him. They came to meet his needs. In Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14, it says that angels are sent as ministers to those who will inherit salvation. So angels minister to us in that same way. They're sent by the Lord to minister to us. They come to meet the needs. That's why Martin this morning, he was being ministered to this morning. Because I believe that the Lord confirms his word by in the accompanying signs. He's been doing a work in our hearts this morning in the ministry, in the serving of the music, it's spoken to people's hearts. Even if we don't recognize a, a one thing that's changed or something, there's God works in us. He noticed that every song was about thankfulness, about being so grateful to the Lord for the way he has done so much for us. He's been so faithful, so good, that his loving kindness lasts forever, that his grace lasts forever, that his grace has been dispensed to us. You know, all through the Gospels it speaks about women who ministered to Jesus. Same word, deacon. They ministered to Jesus, Peter's mother-in-law. She gets healed and fever leaves her. And the first thing she does is gets up and serves. <laughs> I don't know what kind of picture that paints for you, but uh, I'm thinking there's this, this woman on her bed who's just, this fever's been on her and, and she's not been able to do what's in her heart to do, what she usually does. And she's a woman who, who likes to be about the house, likes to be preparing good meals for people, likes to be um, hosting, likes to be... Um, on top of things, and the moment that she gets free, she's straight on it. <laughs> she's like, right, I'm free, I'm serving. <laughs> but her need got met by the Lord Jesus, and immediately her response is serving him and serving the others in that room. Many women followed Jesus, basically followed him around with the sole purpose of ministering to him. They, they might have been doing the cooking, they might have been doing the, <laughs> the washing of the clothes, they, they might have been doing those kind of typically domestic domestic chores, if you like. They might have been ministering to his soul. They might have been meeting me. Maybe Jesus needed a hug one day. Maybe Mary was there to give him that hug. It's the same word, minister to one another. These expressions of his grace, they were expressing God's grace. To, 
to Jesus and those around him. They were an expression of God's love. There was Joanna, there was Susanna, and there was many others. And they all ministered to him out of their own pockets. That's what the word says. Luke 8, verses 1 to 3, talks about these women. Um, they all obviously had their own means. Yeah, maybe, maybe they had businesses. Maybe um, they had a lot of money for the household. Maybe, but they had their own means, and money was given. See, our service can also be giving cash, meeting a need in, in financial ways. But that is an expression. It's a gift. It's an expression of God's love, of His grace. It's another color another facet in Acts 19 and verse 22 it talks about Timothy and Erastus and how they ministered to Paul and I believe that when they ministered to Paul they were ministering to him physically in terms of binding up wounds <laughs> bringing him back to health because it was straight after I think it was being stoned <laughs> they had to leave in a hurry and these guys came to help him um, and he was a while in that place being ministered to. I think there's something there as well about recognizing when we have a need for, to be ministered to, to be served, that there's no shame in saying, send me so-and-so, <laughs> help me out with this. I, I need such and such. I need help with this thing. It doesn't diminish any status. In fact, it provides opportunity for others to express God's gifts, these facets of his grace to us. Paul was ministered to. They attended to his needs. In Mark chapter 10 and verse 45, it says that Jesus Jesus says this of himself, that the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. Remember, Jesus was being ministered to. He was being served. He was being served by the angels. He was being served by the women who were about him. But that's not the primary reason he came. His primary reason was to be a servant to all. And that's what he patterns for us. That's what happened when he got down on the floor and wash the disciples feet he said look if you want to be the greatest you've got to become like this you've got to be the lowest you've got to get down to the lowest place of service to wash people's feet to take the grime off to minister to a physical need not just a spiritual or emotional or any other need let's not downplay ministry serving wherever we see opportunity. Jesus did not come to be served. It wasn't about him getting ministered to. It wasn't about him getting his needs met. It wasn't about him being waited upon hands and foot. It was about him becoming the servant to all and being that waiter. Getting ready with the gifts that God had and delivering it to those who needed it. He went around healing all who were oppressed by the devil and doing it because the Lord was with him, because God was with him. He went around meeting physical needs and ultimately he went around meeting, in his death and his resurrection, he meted the greatest spiritual need there was so that people could become born again, so that relationship could be repaired. His ultimate act of service in going to humbling himself to death on a cross was the means for every single person to come to know him. Then in Philippians chapter 2, it says, let the same mind be in you that was in Christ. How can I serve you? It paves the way for people to come to know him. As 
go to Matthew in chapter 25. I'll start in verse 34. It says, Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you a drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in, or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. Not every single place we find to serve Jesus is counting it as precious ministry to himself he's identified himself here like when you when you did it to the least person when the person who wasn't deserving when the person who wasn't um, in the best place spiritually in the person um, who other people rejected other people despised other people had cast off, when you did the job that nobody else wanted to do, when you saw a need and met it without hesitation, when you gave out of your own pocket, when you, <laughs> whenever you saw a place of service, whenever you fulfilled a need, you were doing it to me. That's powerful. Every time we get to serve somebody, every time we have opportunity to express his grace is, a, is worship. It's a place of ministry to Jesus. <coughs> They're not spectacular things. Giving somebody a drink isn't spectacular. Giving somebody some clothes isn't spectacular. Taking somebody into the house isn't spectacular for a meal. It's not the most exciting. But it's so precious <coughs> and so beautiful as an expression of God's grace as part of that multifaceted, multicolored grace of God. And God knows, God prompts us, the Holy Spirit leads us to meet the needs, to minister as he wants us to minister with what he's provided, when he provides it, it's not on us. He's just looking for us to be willing, mm -hmm. willing servants, willing to serve at a drop of a hat and ready to go. And it's so easy. How many, just now have a, have a second to think, how many things you could help with today? How many things could you help with um, around the house? How many things could you help with with your next door neighbour? There's always opportunities to serve and every opportunity is an opportunity to give glory to him, to bring praise to him, just like we read there at the very beginning in 1 Peter chapter 4. It says, In all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. There's a, a nice statement up there. I'm wondering if we could uh, make that declaration this morning. Um, if you want to be a servant, if you see where you can serve, then I'm going to invite you to stand up on your feet with a hand in the air to volunteer. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I can serve. I can serve. I can do it. I can serve. 
Father, we commit to you that we are ready for service. We are ready to take what you've plated up for people. We are ready to take your gifts. We are ready to take an expression of your multifaceted grace, your multicolored grace, a hue, a sense, a taste of your grace to whomever needs it. Father, I pray, Lord, that you would open our eyes to the needs, to the places where we can serve, and Father, that our minds would be transformed, would be conformed into the mind of Christ. That we don't think anything is too small for us, we don't think anything is too big for us, we don't think that we're better than any activity, that we don't think that, we're, that anything's below us, but that we are willing to humble ourselves even to the point of death. Even when it costs us, even when it is the worst of things that we want to do, when you're moving us, when you are leading us, when you are prompting us, we say, I am ready to serve. I will serve. Yeah. Father, open our ears to your cry of service and show us who needs to receive from you. Father, I thank you for it in Jesus' name and pray a blessing on everyone here and everyone watching that you would Give them the grace, give them the gift, give them the ability, give them the strength to display this amazing love, this amazing grace to every person that they need. Father, I thank you that nothing that we do in service is too small for you to notice. And everything that we do to serve one another, you count as ministry. that it's precious to you as an expression of your love, of your grace. We thank you for it in Jesus' name, like, so that you would be glorified. Amen. Amen.